So how could vertiporfin and BPC complement each other? Are there any hypothetical synergistic applications of these two compounds? For those needing a refresher, vertiporfin is a drug that can prevent scarring when injected at the edge of a wound. This drug, already FDA approved for treating macular degeneration, works by blocking N-grailed 1 N1 activation in fibroblasts, thereby inhibiting scar formation. The groundbreaking research on vertiporfin's role in scar prevention was led by Stanford MD PhD student Shamik Mashrak and his team, as detailed in their study titled Preventing Engrailed One Activation in Fibroblasts Yield Wound Regeneration Without Scarring. In their study, the researchers injected vertiporfin to surgical wounds in mice while simultaneously applying mechanical strain to the healing tissues. The results were remarkable with the healed skin appearing completely normal, devoid of the dense fibrotic scarring typically seen in wound healing. This discovery underscores the potential of vertiporfin not only in preventing scarring, but also in promoting regenerative healing processes that could have profound implications for various medical fields, including hair transplantation. Moreover, the paper Inhibiting Yes-Associated Protein prevents scarring and promotes regeneration in a large animal model of wound repair. Heather E. Talbot and colleagues demonstrated that a single local administration of ertoporfin following injury significantly reduced scarring and induced regenerative healing in red duroc pigs. Notably, these pigs are a close analog to human skin in terms of thickness and are often used in dermatological research, making the findings particularly relevant. The successful regeneration of scarless skin and hair follicles in these pigs points to the potential of vertiporfin to prevent scarring and regenerate hair follicles in humans as well. You see, mammals, including humans, primarily heal through a process that results in scarring. When an injury occurs, the body's immediate response is to close the wound, prevent infection, and restore integrity to the area. This involves a complex cascade of inflammatory responses, tissue formation, and remodeling, often resulting in scar tissue, which is fibrous and lacks the original tissue's full functionality and appearance. The scarring process is quick and effective for survival, but does not restore the original tissue's architecture. In contrast, some species, such as certain amphibians and reptiles, can regenerate lost limbs or organs. This regeneration involves the regrowth of complex structures, including bone, muscle, and skin, to fully restore the lost parts' function and appearance. For example, axolotls can regenerate entire limbs, tail, heart, and other organs with perfect functionality and without scarring. The process involves dedifferentiation of cells, proliferation, and redifferentiation meticulously reconstructing the lost part. When we look at early fetal development in the context of humans, human fetuses have the ability to heal wounds without scarring. This is observed in the unique regenerative capacity of fetal skin, which can completely regenerate without scar formation until a certain point in gestation. The environment within the womb, including high hydration and specific growth factors, along with a distinct cellular response, allows for this scarless healing. Yes-associated protein, or YAP, is a key regulator within the hippo-signaling pathway, crucial for controlling organ size, cell proliferation, and apoptosis. It's also significantly involved in wound healing and tissue regeneration. As we have explored in the previous studies, YAP influences the behavior of fibroblasts such that when it is active, fibroblasts are more likely to create the fibrous, collagen-rich tissue that leads to scars. Blocking YAP would reduce this scarring tendency and encourage a more regenerative form of healing. Given what we have learned from the descriptions of animal models by Guire et al., BPC-157 could be worth exploring for tissue repair in hair transplants. During a hair transplant, scars are created by proxy when surgeons extract hair from the donor area. While vertiporfin may slow down YAP signaling and reduce the formation of scar tissue, there might still be a need for an agent that can promote proper tissue repair and bring the tissue to a state of normalcy and stability. BPC-157, another peptide, or possibly a combination of peptides, could fulfill this role. Hair transplant physicians would need to develop a standardized methodology for administering these peptide injections to the donor area. They would also need to conduct detailed studies to understand what factors could influence the 
healing process. Also, any progress that is made here would have profound impacts to not only the world of dermatology, but regenerative medicine as a whole. You see, scar formation plays a crucial role in many diseases affecting the human body, as it involves the repair of tissue, not just the visible skin that we see. Scarring or fibrosis can form within internal tissues like your lungs or your liver, impacting the connective structures and organs that support various bodily functions. So all in all, BPC-157 or 157 doesn't seem to have direct hair growth benefits, so I wouldn't rank this as a promising peptide for topical use, injectable use on the scalp, or to be honest, even oral use, and be very careful of these oral supplements because sometimes you're not even sure what you're getting and it could have some other risky impurities inside of them as well so be very careful don't play with these kinds of things and if you are to source it out it would be better to go to a legitimate pharmacy or at least consult with a medical practitioner <laughs>